Welcome to the NFT Finance Podcast, sponsored by Goblin Sex. My name is Terry, and I'll be your host today. Today, we welcome Aaron from Wasabi and NFT Options Protocol. Hi, Aaron. How are you doing? I'm good. Hey, I just landed in Denver yesterday. How about you? How are you doing? Yeah, awesome. I just landed in Denver as well. Um, there's actually a lot of NFT finance stuff happening here, which is always great. Um, but yeah, like we'd love to dive right in. Uh, we'd love to get to know you better. What's your background? How'd you get into NFTs, crypto, NFT finance in particular? Uh, for sure. So I have a um, I have a background in computer engineering. I studied that back at school. I had the opportunity to explore a bunch of different fields. Got into robotics. Got published um, accelerating robotics in perception algorithms, and then had the opportunity to work at two startups very closely with the co-founders, help them raise, help them find product market fit. Um, and then I come from a family of artists. I was introduced to NFTs a year and a half ago. And when I was introduced to NFTs, my whole world changed. I just realized that um, they provide an opportunity for artists to fundraise for their creative projects in a much more accessible way. And I decided to build a more efficient market for them. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, And what is Wasabi? Wasabi is the decentralized NFT options protocol. Um, It basically solves a bunch of problems in the space. So right now, uh, there is no uh, sustainable way of hedging against NFTs or NFT-backed loans, as you might know. Wasabi provides a solution for that. There's no way to get affordable exposure into price movements in the market. As you know, like uh, lately, it's been more bearish. And in the bear market, you can't just expect to buy low and sell high. Um, But if there's a product that lets you profit from market movements, it is actually very good in these these, uh, kinds of times. And then lastly, people cannot make any money on their NFTs. Like market making on NFTs is pretty hard. And Wasabi provides a solution for that. So like big holders and market makers are able to generate juicy yield on their NFT and ETH pairs using Wasabi. And all together, um, this brings more liquidity to the market and creates a more efficient market for all. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. I guess I do want to delve more into um, you know, whether Wasabi is like the best solution for these problems. But first, would love an introduction to basically how it works. Um, yeah, so and there to some people, but I, I think it's fairly simple. Everything's uh, based on a pool structure. So a market maker comes in, they deposit a collection and an ETH pair into a pool, very similar to Uniswap pairs or like Pseudoswap. And then you define as a market maker certain parameters um, that we have like a basic configuration and an advanced one. and then. The pool takes in a price feed, and according to the current floor price of the assets, it issues options, virtual potential options to the market. And as a trader, once you log into the front end, you see um, the potential strikes and premiums you could purchase uh, based on the parameters that the market maker had entered. And then you just choose the strike and premium that satisfies your needs. And then the underlying collateral in the pool is locked. Um, So if you buy a call option, you get the right to purchase an NFT in the future at the reserved price. So for the uh, time of the contract, we actually lock an NFT for you within the pool so that if you want to exercise it, you can always purchase the underlying. And then similarly, if you purchase a put option, you get the right to sell an NFT to the pool in the future at the predetermined price. Um, And if that's the case, we then lock the corresponding ETH amount in the pool so that um, you can always sell an NFT to the pool at that price. Gotcha. That's super clear. Um, I guess one thing I want to go back to is you mentioned that Wasabi as an options protocol is solving a couple of problems. Number one, there's no sustainable way to hedge against NFTs. Number two, uh, there's no affordable way to get price exposure. Um, and number three, there's no way to make yield. I guess I'm quite curious, um, 
like what you think about the existence of perps uh, specifically so i think we've seen in you know erc20 markets that uh, perps have always you know dominated options in terms of volume now whether that's because people just understand them better uh, or just people you know crypto natives don't want to touch options i'm not entirely sure why uh, but that's always been the case i guess in crypto so like one thing i'm curious about is why would you think that it's different or what's different about this time in nfts and why is options a better way to get exposure here um first of all great question thank you for asking this this is a question we get a lot as you can imagine because everyone in defi um has seen in the past uh, that perps like work better than more like trad fi financial uh, instruments such as options and we have two reasons why we went with options instead of perps first reason is um we're building a financial primitive so we're not looking to build a standalone product that is based on an index where people get to bet against each other we're building a product that touches other existing players in the market so as i mentioned we're not only a way to hedge against um nfts but we're also a way of hedging against nft backed loans and the reason why that is the case is because um we don't like with perps uh you have you don't have physical settlement you have um an index that settles you automatically and um that has a couple issues first of all as i mentioned it can like it doesn't provide a solution to be a financial primitive for um buying insurance on nft backed loans or it does not increase the total trade volume in the spot market like our options we built an arbitrage flow so if you're in the money we connect you with uh, the highest bid uh, if you have a call option or we connect you with the lowest ask in the market if you have a put option and we let you exercise your option just to take profits without you having to spend anything um just by getting a flash loan and then in return there is a spot trade that happens in the actual market so by using options we're basically allowing more spot trade volume to happen in the market and we're also allowing our put options are basically like credit default swaps for lenders with perps you don't get either of these like side effects because it's just based on a price index and similarly with defi uh, perps have been more popular with more liquid tokens um like btc eth and the main reason for that is because perps are easier to understand like you don't have to go back and exercise it you don't have to like understand the strike or the premium but with nfts as you might know uh, the liquidity is much less than what it is available with uh, liquid tokens that's why like if you if you want to have a product a derivatives product based on a price feed you have to somehow make sure that that price feed is not open to manipulations and that is extremely hard because like if you have a 10000 asset collection then how are you going to make sure someone who holds 50 or 60 of them are going to uh, play nicely like with options because you're physically settling because the option holder has the sole right to exercise their option regardless of a price feed um that creates a second layer of protect protection for the holder to do their own research and to see if they actually want to exercise or not gotcha gotcha i guess one thing i'm curious about is um, in particular we've actually seen that folks are uh hedging their nft loan book on uh, on perps already um specifically meta street with their uh punks vault and then i think they believe automatically they hedge it on nft perp um like have you guys seen this type of activity uh yet in the options markets um yeah so we're actively working with uh we're actively conversing with some lender planning protocols to provide one click insurance um on their own website so like um let's say you were actually lending um as soon as you like match with someone who wants to borrow against uh who wants to borrow against their nft with the click of a button you will be able to mint a put option 
on Wasabi without even having to navigate to Wasabi. And you're going to basically get cash insurance um, on that specific loan until the loan expires. And like you could get 100% coverage on that loan, which in return would probably increase the principal amounts uh, on these lending protocols and enable the lenders to generate more interest on the loans that they lend. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as one of the largest lenders in the space ourselves at Goblin Sachs, like we've definitely encountered this problem, right? Like where we do want to at times be a lot less conservative, but we simply can't because, you know, when we started lending, I think about a year ago, um, you know, at a kind of institutional size, there was just absolutely no product out there um, that could provide us a hedge. And then six months later, uh, when these products came to market, there was still no product out there that had the liquidity uh, that could provide us a hedge at the size that we needed. Um, so I guess like this is sort of you know um, leading into my next question, where you know, we were sort of the earliest observers and you know potential users of a lot of the options protocols that came before you guys. You know, Putty Finance, Kali Finance, Hook Protocol, where we were very eager to you know try to use those to either uh, have some type of opportunistic LP or uh, hedge our exposure to you know NFT loans, but the problem has always been that there wasn't a counterparty. Um, specifically, uh, yeah, like there, in, in your case, it would be like a market maker. Um, so I guess like like what's different this time? Um, like, are we ready for this? Yeah, um, actually, like I can answer this, but I'm also curious about your experience with using perps and not physically uh, physically settling if you have an active loan still. Like if the price movement's too much, what happens then as a lender if your like option, uh, if your open position is just liquidated? Um, but separately, like going back to your question, um, we're very different from our predecessors. Um, like I looked at, uh, I looked at a bunch of these protocols. Most of them either have only calls or only puts. Um, like hook exam, for example, I think they only have calls. Um, and then Bully Bear, I think, has only puts. Uh, Puri Finance and um, what was their counterpart? Uh, Col- Coley Finance, I think. They seem to have uh, something interesting, but the problem with them is that it's peer to peer, it's not pool to peer. Like, I think. The most ingenious thing we did with our protocol design is basically um, as an LP, as a market maker, you define boundaries of strikes and expirations that you want to issue options on. With the predecessors, with the previous uh, protocols that tried to attack the same options problem, they would enter a specific bid for a specific, uh, for a specific NFT or they would create one specific option tied to a specific collateral. So if the if there are significant price jumps for the underlying collateral, then the premium you price to that is not going to actually match the current market state. And you might end up selling an option on an NFT where which is like which is already in the money. With us, because we use actual real-time price feeds, and because every time the user logs on, the trader, every time they um, pick a collection, we using the actual current floor price, we render all the potential strikes and premiums they could select from, given the LP's initial parameters. So matching, um, matching the LP's like offer with the, uh, with the bid in the market is much easier and much more efficient, uh, thanks to our architecture. Gotcha. Does gotcha. that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. To me, it's kind of like the equivalent of, um, say, like Nifty Five's peer-to-peer model to, like, say, Asteria's, um, you know, strategist to pool model. Uh, though, I guess, like, we've yet to better understand if that's, like, theoretically a better UX or like an actual better UX improvement there. Um, but on note of that, like, I'm quite curious, like, who are uh, who who is LPing or who will be LPing? Um, who have you guys talked to that is interested in LPing? Like obviously, uh, like someone like us would be like a good fit. You know, someone who's willing 
to provide capital to do a lot more, I guess, like sophisticated option strategies for yield. Uh, but I'm curious who else uh, has expressed interest. Yeah, for sure. So there are some people that have expressed interest, but we um, like we didn't get a commitment from them yet. So I wouldn't feel comfortable sharing those names. But we already um, have Temple Dow, who committed a significant amount um, to market make on Wasabi. And like, what excites me the most about that fact is that Temple Dow itself we're not very big on NFTs previously, right? So like, because we're building a interesting financial product that has the potential to generate a lot of yield, now we're seeing more like on-chain DeFi native protocols looking into the NFT files. Um, so that was like a pretty interesting uh, development for us. But separately, we are about to announce this today, France Capital. Um, they also committed to market make um, separately. Like we uh, were talking to collections, we're talking to big veils. Uh, we have a bunch of investors who hold um, a lot of assets. They're looking to market make. Um, so we're and like obviously we're talking to market makers such as yourself and then more traditional ones. Gotcha. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I guess um, one thing I'm very curious about is, again, I, I can't help but feel that at the very least, having observed the launches of multiple structured products on NFTs, um, whether that was uh, you know, vault products, fractionalized products, yield products, options, protocols, derivatives, it seems that usage is very early. Like We are very, very early in this space. So as you guys who you know are building in this space, you know, I've decided to launch the product at this point. You know, I've talked to multiple users. Like, what do you think the next say six months will look like? Like, are we too early? Are we going to get to adoption through say, you know, people hedging their NFT lending exposure? Um, are we going to get to a place where people are buying and selling NFT options, kind of like they're, you know, buying and selling say like per products or, you know, um, yeah, like per products on like centralized exchanges. Uh, you know, as more so like a, um, you know, betting on price action type of product. Like, so what is the trajectory of NFT derivatives that you see? Uh, so I'm actually very bullish uh, because NFTs, like you can't get uh, affordable exposure otherwise because NFTs are most of the time sold in discrete increments. So like just taking a, a purely like a foundational perspective, what we're doing as the whole derivatives market is solving a big problem for like all the small fish who's trying to enter um, the various blue chip NFT markets. But separately, like since the beginning of 2023, right? Like there has been interesting tailwinds in the market. Um, like first Yuga announced uh, like the sewer pass. And then we had uh, proofs um, grail uh, season three. And then, like, there had been more interesting events, like, especially uh, very recently, like, um, OSF and Mando dumping, like, 72 ETH. Um, you're starting to see that, like, there are all these interesting events happening, but, and, like, it's very easy to really, like, it's, it's, you got to be brainless in order to understand when like a certain collection is going to increase or decrease in price. Um, and you would know this better, but like um, the landing uh, amounts and the landing volume uh, in the past couple of months, I think are off the charts. So I think we're getting into a place where people are looking into NFTs and NFT finance more seriously. And uh, we just... I think like we're at the perfect spot to be right at the center of it. Awesome. That's, I think, a great summary. So what's in store for the future of Wasabi? How can people get involved? Um, so we have our testnet trading competition that's going on right now. Um, it's free to enter. Uh, it's on testnet. You join our Discord, whitelist your uh, address, and then we airdrop you some demo tokens and some early ETH for you to trade. That's how like you understand how to use the product. Uh, you get a chance to win up to two ETH with our future NFT drop. Um, and in April, we're looking to launch on mainnet. Uh, so 
Hopefully, you'll come join our testnet. Uh, you'll get some exposure into NFT options, make some spicy trades, and then you'll, you'll be ready to trade on mainnet with actual money. Awesome. Thank you, Aaron, for your time. Of course. My pleasure. Follow me on Twitter. I'm 0xTayTayHoHo on Twitter. Uh, that's Tay with an E. And you can follow Ryan at underscore Helmets. Yeah, and that's uh, underscore H-E-L-M-A-S-S. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, and we'll, uh, we'll catch you soon.